Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the second series of SOCM webinar. The topic for today's uh, session is cyber risk and mitigation. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure uh, to have uh, three different sectors of from education to banking, financial, to healthcare, together with us to talk a little bit more on cyber risk and mitigation. My name is Deepak Talwar. I'm the co-chairman for SOHM National Council on Cybersecurity, and I'm also the National Security for Microsoft India. A very warm welcome to all of you. Um, uh, who are, I hope I'm audible to everyone. Uh, with the best of COVID time, network connectivity is also critical. So I have uh, switched off my uh, video for time being so that you can listen properly. Thank you for joining in. Let me take a very quick minute to introduce our distinguished speakers. Uh, welcome, Professor Dr. Ajay Rana, Senior Vice President, Ritman Balwed Education Foundation Group from Amity um, uh, AKG Group. Uh, welcome, Mr. Samir Rath Alikar, uh, EVP and CISO for HDFC Bank. He may be joining in some time, trying to connect. Um, a warm welcome, Mr. Arvind Shivakrishnan, uh, Group CIO, Apollo Hospitals. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, on this webinar series. Uh, welcome, Mr. Shivakumar Pandey, uh, Group CISO from BSE Limited. A very warm welcome to Devashir Mukherjee, Vice President and Regional Sales, Sonic Wall. Heartiest welcome to, uh, to all the distinguished speakers. Thank you for taking our time. Uh, very quickly, we will get into the topic. Uh, I'm sure we all are going through this uh, you know, pandemic situation, working from home, uh, remotely connected for multiple hours altogether. But let me share uh, to set the tone of today's uh, webinar session on cyber risk and mitigation. Um, it's, it's attackers are capitalizing on fear. We are watching them and we are pushing them. Still, we see our inboxes, mobile alerts, TVs, news updates, all over COVID-19 all the time. I mean, it's overwhelming and attackers know it. They know many are clicking without looking because stress levels are high and they are taking advantage of that. And that's why we are seeing an increase in the success of phishing attacks, increase in success of engineering attacks. Attackers don't suddenly have more resources diverting. We are setting up our own laptops and desktop. We were never prepared of that. Um, so there is, a, there is a situation of something like which is not prepared for 10 years have come in 10 days to us. Uh, just to share one aspect before I hand over to the distinguished speakers, uh, even from the organization where I belong to from Microsoft, the threat intelligence team, we actively monitor and respond uh, to see the shift in the focus. And it's not about just number of threats increased or the risk or mitigation plan or business continuity need to come out. There is also a way or the search in the type of attacks or the intelligence which the, the cyber criminals are utilizing and that can be as minimum as not having the basic hygiene. Uh, that was first of our topic of cyber hygiene and best practices. Uh, and, the, and the talk was given by our own National Cyber Secretariat General Pan. And this is now we are talking into the enterprise, healthcare, and education. Without much ado, I would uh, you know quickly get into the agenda. I would like to invite our first speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Ajay Rana, Senior Vice President, RBF Amity. Uh, uh, Dr. Ajay Rana, you are part of education industry and we would like our audience and all of us uh, uh, to tell us the real information, the stories, how things are moving, uh, and how are the plans, both uh, being in the education community and obviously you, you help us touch on the students and faculty, the sentiments which are going around. Uh, passing on to Arvind, uh, uh, passing on to Ajay Rana. Yeah, Hirinda, can you share my this, this screen, please? Thank you, uh, Mr. Deepak Talwar, uh, to touch about this uh, pandemic situation where the entire world uh, on this situation to tackle about their data and the database. So I'm touch about the main education sector because uh, Hirinda, can you share my screen, please, so that I will start my presentation? Rohit or Hirinda? So uh, uh, that is visible to all, uh, Deepak? Yes. Yes, this is better. Uh, we can see the first slide, cyber security risk and mitigation. Yeah, uh, thank you, Deepak. So my main concern is that about a lot of persons in this COVID situation, COVID-19, 
uh, they think about the education and the education sector. So I'm touch uh, two more important thing uh, before we start my presentation. And we should all remember one thing that what we have learned in our day to day life with our gurus and gurus, not only about those other teachers, but the gurus with respect to the corporate world as well. And at our this the body language and our behavior uh, with respect to all trends. And they said home is the first school for every child or we can say that every citizenship or every citizen. My dear friends, maximum of the speakers belongs to various sectors, sector with respect to healthcare, sector with respect to cyber security, and the Deepak itself belongs to Microsoft. But in the today's scenario, uh, there's a huge demand by about how to secure our database cyber security from third party or some unknown persons outside from our organization. And we call that is cyber security risk. Uh, my main uh, this is the point about the first is about the data game in the world in the current scenario yes data plays a very important role you know that what time of this data become data around 150 years what time of become reliance is the reliance around 43 years what about the Birla? what about the microsoft what about the oracle what about the apollos what about any other sectors they have some ethics, values, and sanskar, so that they achieve a lot. But what about the cybersecurity right now? In the current scenario, you think about the Facebook, you think about the LinkedIn, you think about the Amazon, you think about the Twitter, you think about the Google. These are the companies who are take a rise, who lead entire world within five to ten years, not more than five to ten years. Entire world about about on this sectors and they said yes data plays a very important role about my this education sector that is about about the growth potential about our honorable prime minister modi said okay, that we will be five trillion dollar uh, market our just the economy with respect to entire globe about 2022 but here about education sector that is a very alarming means the global education sector is around six percent of the global world product that is very important and these are the facts and the figures by the world bank report and according to world bank report they are the three main sectors who are always uh, in a peak number one is about healthcare. Uh, in this situation we call them covid warriors as well and in this sectors the health sectors plays a very important role for some developed country developing country or third nation second is about the infrastructure after this covid pre covid and during the covid this infrastructure plays a very important role how we communicate around around across the globe and third important thing is about world is the bank report and education sector is the most important third one sector which have the huge potential and in this by point number two said that around 4.5 percent compound annual growth with respect to the world and and about the 10 trillion dollar by 2030 that is a projected report and there's a no slowdown in this sector there's no slowdown you you are you are very surprised that every year from the indian market around 24 billion dollar market that we projected to the outside world where our young and dynamic persons future leaders of other education sectors from us from uk and australia in this sector you said that the rate of digitalization in education institutions increase how they project them so there the integration among technology and the education sector so uh, according to this uh, my point of view the more and more education institutions are implement digital solutions and here now the play of the cyber stack cyber hackers the hackers of cyber securities plays a very important role you know that every year around lakhs of the students appear in jwe and that is the one example i'm the part of uh, csab center seat allocation board from the private education institution for last around around eight years and the very alarming you pay four thousand rupees to 16,000 rupees and you are easily find their database from the market 
for example jwe the data every year around more than 16 lakh students of jwe if this data is available from the market then what about the other data that available you know that the, when the student take admission from nursery to the college we will find all details about their parents annual income about their parent professional about about how about their uh, local guardian uh, about their employees uh, from the organization and many more so 16 lakh database plus is available to all of the persons and these are the hackers who play with database and that's why a lot of the companies those who are not not work with at point of view they place with database so with this about you say that in the student tracking performance schedule classes monitor assignments providing online courses and conducting virtual classes whenever you enter about all these things you will find many players uh, there's a, in the last week the news going on about the some uh, i'm not mentioning the name of any organization the data may available on the portal if any organization use their digital platform so during this covid 19 post challenge to the education sector as well and this depends on technology we are the first university when the friday government of india declared that please close this entire education system on monday we will start our training we will start our teaching uh, from two day after with the help of these technologies and i thank you all these uh, technology experts all the system those who support our delivery but in this scenario according to modizis according to china according to us and according to the up government or according to the calcutta the government the government declared that before 10th june there's no predictions to open the education institution so these are the three and four sectors education sectors plays a very important role where you will find around around crores of the students who be the part of any school college or the higher education institution part second is about about the cinema halls third about the malls and fourth is about about the social gathering so education sector because government have a control government have a, this the full full access to about about the person sit idle at home and educate themselves with the help of digital technologies but my main concern is that what about the cyber hackers they are they are too active they are too active to send the email by some the email from president at the rate xyz organization ceo at the rate xyz organization or we are blocking your services we are blocking your this a concern so about this the students how you get the information from the students the students about the current student those who are present in our system and second is about about our alumni the third is about the faculty and the fourth important about the research data third is oh, and last is intellectual properties whenever you file any patent when your research data my dear friends you are surprised that a lot of accrediting agencies if you have a time after this presentation go with any portal ugc nba nirf or uh, uh, nba ranking you simply click about suppose xyz organization you will easily find out about the details of these organization if you go with aicte then you will find the details of all faculty members those who are registered on the portal then how the data secure when the student take admission we need some aadhar card and end of the day we have mentioned about one point i am agree with all terms and condition now here the cyber hackers active mode first is about the financial gain they have the entire data available with the help of direct or indirect or with the help of third person third party that the data is easily available and because the fees whenever we pay fees you have the entire details about the credit card i am talking about the education sector because these education sectors depends on direct or indirect technology they are not so experts they are not so advanced about the companies the companies manage around around thousands or ten thousand number of the employees but what about the education institutions those who have around 400 500 students have they are working on this the some some funding from the government side but how to manage these database from third party so fees 
about about uh, the concern so they will uh, hackers plays a very important role because they have the entire details with the help of Aadhaar card with the help of some other confidential data and data theft yes whenever you take admission in X college my dear friends you will find the data the same type of audience the same type of persons who are available with other colleges so that is the movement of data from one college to another college oh, what about this about this the hackers why the hackers becomes more common on the education sector the first important thing about the lack of in-house knowledge around 45 percent population of this education sector i'm so sorry i'm belong to that sector but i have faced a lot of challenges there is in-house lack of knowledge and hackers knows all these things they know that education sectors work on this the absolute technology they know that how this education sector work not about about the 30 percent 40 percent institutions those who are use the technologies beyond this system but what about the others second is about 30 percent they're the outdated softwares and the third and important thing about the data store only in the one location these education institution not work like airtel uh, or some uh, facebook the google microsoft any other word use the virtual database but they are 100 percent dependent so they are reliable on the persons who work continuously in the system so data stored in the one location and that is the the culture issues bring your own device they said all education institutions have their own responsibility to manage their database but here this the main the hackers attack directly or indirectly to the system they are directly 20 percent have experienced in the cyber attack about their malware phishing deny the services attacks or ransom attack and many more so every time the our faculty members i have received or we have received many uh, this the email he sir we have received the email from the top person of the system and my services may be blocked please guide us or there are some condition i may agree with all these terms and conditions they mention one subject line they mention in the email address type nine is about about ceo at the rate xyz organization so they attack randomly and if they send this email to around for example 100 employees we know that around around 70 percent not replied but what about the 30 percent what about the 30 percent who directly reply these persons and they are breach entire information from the system but uh, about this mitigation i know that the time limit is there so uh, i am totally this the focus about the main point so that i am not here to uh, use uh, various points but few points from my side uh, about with all education institutions all systems those who are related to schools and higher education and the colleges the number one step is that about establish the information security team uh, all colleges have right now outsourced their service to third party we know that third party have signed some mous i request all education institution before um, uh, take any uh, cheap vendor before take any uh, this the uh, unauthorized the vendor or some the software those who are not reliable please manage your team with a group of at least three to five percent the strength of your reply from system from information security team and i here to request all the persons those who belong to uh, this it companies please concentrate about some education institution where you find the huge potential market and third is second important about point is that in identify the information assets it is your responsibility how to manage these informations for the betterment of their employee for the betterment of their future assets those who have become the future leaders how to manage this information access the current security posture it is it is the responsibility of any education institution okay if the parents if the students share their personal details you know that in us and some developed country we are not authorized to share the details of one student with the parents as well but how if these information are available in market so we should take care about 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 the securities manage the risk it is our responsibility to uh, like in my point number eight the spread awareness and conduct the training from the sdp means the student development uh, program fdp faculty development program and here we need the help from the corporates we know that they are the csr fund is there we know that the lot of corporates approach to education institution they said we give free of cost training to your student 
they approach to the education institution about the free certification they approach to the students uh, you know in the market there's a lot of uh, i call these the cyber hackers i call these persons as hackers they approach to the education institution and in this situation they said education institution we give the free of cost training to you my dear friends in this world there's nothing free they give the free of cost virtual training whenever you enter the entire details free around 30 percent and 70 percent after that they will charge money from your side so uh, that is about uh, i touch uh, three and four sectors from my side and i hope that uh, if anyone have any question so deepak uh, you are modded entire session i'm available with all of you uh, after this i haven't seen entire this the panelist my colleague panelist so you have full right to ask anything that is from my side deepak hopes that i have completed my presentation on time I hope I am audible now. Yes. Okay. Uh, with okay, very quickly. Thank you, Dr. Ajay Rana. I hope it, you can hear me now. Yeah, Deepak, please, I can hear you. <clears throat> okay, thank, thank you, Dr. Ajay. I'll, I'll, uh, you know, uh, there will be some technical uh, issues or challenges while remotely we are connecting. Our apologies, but bear with us. We will try to do best of the possible with video and audio uh, for audience and for the uh, speakers. Uh, um, thank you for bringing the financial theft and data theft as the, the required, you know, cyber criminals are uh, taking all such informations easily available, accessible in, in the domain of information security and especially in the education sector. Very nicely brought out uh, Dr. Rajay Rana, the you know, mitigation practices, establishing an information security team, identifying your assets, something called as crown jewels, where you put it, manage risk. There should be an incident on plan. And obviously awareness plays an important role. Thank you for bringing that up. We will come back on the on the questions. Just to bring that perspective from the industry, uh, Devash, I would like to invite uh, Devash Khali, uh, President for Sonic Wall. Uh, it will be good while we have covered one sector of education before move to thinking in health care. How are you seeing? Yeah, thank you, Deepak. You can, uh, Mohit, can you just put my slides? Thank you so much. Is my slides visible? Yes, very yes. much. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, definitely, uh, Mr. Rana, Dr. Rana has already set the agenda at the platform for me. So it's a, a it's across actually. I think it's uh, from everywhere we see this uh, similar kind of threats and my agenda will be primarily to give you that what exactly the perspective from the industry what we see right so uh, you can see that the topic is boundless cyber security uh, it's not new but uh, you know uh, we are uh, seeing it from last couple of years and we are practicing it 
but probably now today it's more appropriate and that's what we are used utilizing this word boundless cyber security and we'll i'll talk about that sorry okay so what we are actually trying to solve when uh, you know we are going through a challenging time of course we all know that worldwide we are facing the problem with the the covid 19 and the problems what problem statement we are trying to solve here we are trying to solve problem statement is a two problem statement rather one is uh, employee safety second is business challenge right and beneath that definitely you know what we are talking about is anytime anywhere business and that's what is the need of the hour so what what exactly we are we are so if you see the present situation of course we are trying to solve anywhere anywhere business but then it's it's today's need but actually if you see beneath that it's that industry is actually started accepting all these technologies since long right it's because of all of a sudden all these issues or pandemic happened so entire world is talking about remote working or or uh, or remote uh, mobility solutions but it's not new to the organizations because it is already started long back but probably we are started utilizing 100 percent of those uh, those uh, technologies so why why we are reaching into that we are reaching into that if i keep the covid 19 for the time being as an aside it's more of a we are getting into a race to digitize right proliferation of apps a lot of applications are using the organizations are getting into borderless so it's for example if i give you sonic wall is not today that we are working remotely we are a remote organization from from the inception you know? and various organization when we were part of dell even dell is primarily the remote employee organization the primary all these organization are actually seeing all this or ad adapted all these technologies long back so this is not new for us the, of course for the entire world probably it is new and that's what we are trying to showcase that what can be done and what are the technologies we have plus what are the problems we are trying to solve so the borderless organization is actually not new it's it's already started many organizations started accepting these technologies but probably today the scale is bigger okay pervasive cloud now the usage of cloud is more and the and more of a virtualized now we have started utilizing the virtualization evolving regulations so in the same time we have to meet the regulations right so what new the work reality the reality is we are we are trying to solve that everyone is remote we are talking about everyone is mobile and everyone is less secure right again uh, again i'm referring dr rana's uh, uh, thing the data is insecure I, I completely understand it's not only education it's everywhere and everywhere and I will talk about that. Okay, what is happening? Because now everyone is started talking, started working remotely. A right? threat landscape is definitely you know increasing. So what are the attacks? What we have seen, we are seeing every year billions of attacks. But if you see specifically after this COVID-19, we have seen specifically that that they have started attacking even the remote employees because they understand the remote employees are vulnerable. They are probably their infrastructure is not ready. They are not utilizing proper software, proper hardware. So somehow they are trying to manage the business. So this is the right time to attack all these people, right? And if you have seen multiple attacks, I'm not getting into the exact data, but I've captured a couple of snapshots to give you that what all is happening. And I'm sure all of you know this, right? But then second thing, when we are talking about complexities of solution, again, uh, know I'm going back to Dr. Ranas. Uh, he mentioned the lack of knowledge it's fact that it's not so you you are not on you know and only a organization or a vertical where you are facing this challenge we see this challenge across right when we are talking about complexity in solutions we have a lack of challenge and lack of re, uh, the the resources right so we are talking about when the explosion of you know technologies are increasing we don't have the right the resource available but then if i have to hire a right resources the cost of resource is too high, but the reality is different. Reality is your actual headcount, your actual budget is much lesser than what exactly you need to mitigate your demand, right? And that's what we call our industry is talking about cybersecurity business gap. So what we are trying to solve is it's together. One is technology problem solving, 
Second is cybersecurity business gap together because we understand it's not that I have a technology and I will give you that technology that will create complexity in your network or in your environment. But then who will be will solving this problem? It's our responsibility to I can give you a solution so that which can solve your technology demand as well as the cybersecurity gap demand, right? So that you you see it in a in a single package. And that's what we are talking about the the solution. So how now the second question, which is coming probably all of your in your mind that, OK, now I have understood the problem. I have understood the gap. But then how can I mitigate my risk? How can I run my business? So the what is the looking forward is we came out with the technology called boundless cybersecurity when the environment is distributed, right? So what organizations are actually doing and when the business is normal so whatever what we are talking about that's the business is we are considering this is the state of normal so we see many organizations although we have multiple references so these are the some of the references i can take through you that these are the in recent which we have kind of actually seen during the attacks or during the covid 19 how we have solved their problem so if you see four big accounting firms, the globally more than 200,000 user we have connected in you know, less than maybe 10, 15 days, right? So they, we have given, in, given them the remote mobility, remote connectivity, and they are up and running and they are not. So I can't take them the name because all these are legal issues. It's in the process, but you will come to know, but then multiple resource reference cases uh, and our, uh, architectures are available with us. If you are interested, you can, log into sonicwall.com and get download all this information. Government, right? The millions of the different people who are not in their base camp, they are connected through our solutions. Higher education, right? So we, this is one of the example of one of the largest higher education, I think the institute, which is higher education plus research institute because their IPs are critical. They have implemented similar solutions to protect their data and to protect their IPs. What is the critical success factor? So leverage the breakthrough, the global secured layer threat. We are talking about layer security since long. All of you know, those who are practicing security, they understand security is not a point solution. That you buy one firewall or something else or email security, we can have a number of solutions that you are protected. This is a layered technology. You need to follow that layered technology, either whether you are in the perimeter or without perimeter, like we are talking about borderless, even you have to go into that layered technology. With that, with the layered technology, it has to be a machine learning and deep inspection built in so that you can give you that solution. And we are talking about that. So what exactly this boundless cybersecurity model? These are the four key, key platform. I'm not talking about, I'm, I'll not get into that detail because I, in the interest of time, it's more of a, we are trying to be, solve the problem anywhere, everywhere. The business is anywhere, everywhere. How I can give you, connect all your devices, your user and your data work. And then when I'm giving you connection or, or secured connection, this, this connection has to be secure. And to give you secure connection, I should know the unknown. Okay, so that is the, called the terminology which you, you, we use is called know the unknown. If I don't know the unknown, what are the attacks happening to your network, I cannot protect you. And then third is seamless coverage. So when you are working from home, your network is should be secured, should be seamless, right? That's a seamless uh, coverage what we can, we can provide. And it has to be a multi-layer because threat can be from anywhere. It, if you are using, let's say, only a one layer, for example, you are behind a firewall, you can't say that I'm protected you have different vectors like email, you have an endpoint, you have a cloud access, right? All these type of vectors are there. So what we are talking about is multi-layer approach. And the last but not least, which is a unified view. This is a pain which is primarily for your IT user or IT administrator. Now your users are across, not in one location, and but still you have to manage, you have to monitor, you have to see what exactly is happening. All the policies are implemented across or not. But that's a unified view has to be there. So what exactly the problem, what we are trying to solve with the boundless security with disruptive economics, intelligent automation and adapt continuously. So these are the three base pillar.
through which we have created the cybersecurity boundless model. Okay, so the answer is Sonic Wall Boundless Cybersecurity, and I will talk about what exactly the main pillars of boundless cybersecurity. There are three pillars what we have decided that one is, of course, know the unknown, which I have already spoken about. Through how we are doing it, we have a couple of technologies like sandboxing, which our technology name is called Capture ATP, which is Advanced Threat Protection, RTDMI, which is a real time deep memory inspection, which is again a unique in the industry when we even scan the memory level inspection. And then there is a different kind of technology, artificial intelligence, and, and all these things we do so that we can see that, okay, uh, we can un identify the no unknown attacks. Unified visibility. Again, when you have multiple technologies, multi-location, distributed architecture, it has to be a unified uh, visibility. And the disruptive economics, it has to grow with your business demands, right? It cannot be a stagnant that, okay, now I have implemented and it will go for ages. No, it, during, it has to be a, it, you know, agile based on your business requirement. It has to change the shape. And that's what we call uh, disruptive economics. Okay, so what is boundless exposure? Now, if you see, these are your, at the bottom of the screen, you can see that these are the exposure points. These are the type of attacks which we are trying to solve. Memory threats, crypto jacking, encrypted threats, multiple time phishing, non-standard ports, and your the vehicles are many. Now it is no more only a, your laptop, right? It can be your endpoint, your can, can be your IoT device, your Wi-Fi access, access point, your clouds, your, your email security, and we are trying to solve all these problem and all these uh, devices through a boundless cybersecurity model. So what exactly the architecture, how we are solving this? So when we see that, okay, my threat vectors are coming from multiple uh, sites, like multiple layer, either it's a email, mobile, cloud, endpoint, we are trying to get the data from all these points through our deep learning algorithm where we are actually trying to get all these attacks, right? If you see 9.9 .9 billion file we have received last year, that is from our threat intelligence team. And out of that 99% we solve on its own because we know those attacks, which is called known attacks, where we have the signatures or artifacts available with us. So that means 99% we are protecting. So, you know, in school, if you are achieving 99% marks, you are A plus grade, right? But in security, even 99% is not enough. We are talking about that 1%. Even that 1% can be a big number because that is 99 million. If 99 million can actually you know, stop 99 million organizations business. So that's what is our interest, that knowing the unknown. When we know and how we do that, we through our capture ATP sandbox, it, again, it's a multi-layered engine plus the real-time deep memory inspection, and we are blocking even the unknown data. And that's what is remaining 1%, what we are talking about. And, and then once we understand, then again, we try, we create the artifacts for the entire community and we protect the entire community. If it is clear, you know, clean the file, then we, we deliver to the user. So this is the model in a summary. I know, you know I cannot get into detail because of the short of time, so I'm a little fast, but if you have any question, definitely you can reach back to me and we can give you uh, more information. So when we are doing all these activities, it has to be a single pane of glass, right? All these activities has to be captured in a single pane of glass. And that is the way we can actually minimize your, you know, uh, the skill gap because we can't say that, okay, now we have technology which will create a problem for you. Now, what we are talking about only one piece in our entire layered security, because our layered security is it's it's big. It's a the portfolio is big, but what I've taken is only one piece, which is primarily for boundless. When we are talking about a primarily the problem which we are trying to solve today is when you are boundless or you are beyond the perimeter, right? Within you are not within the perimeter. So what we are talking about is a three layer, and these are the layer which Ideally, you should implement in your organization to protect. So this is a combination of layer. It's not a single point of product. One is user and client. You have to protect your client. And that client has to have a clientless access. It should understand multi-factor authentication, SSO, endpoint. It should meet the endpoint compliances plus a full client EPC, that embedded packet capture. In combination of our the 
the product, which is the, again in the leader in the industry, which is called Secure Mobile Access, which has a various forms, shape, size, and it's a physical, virtual, or even cloud. So you can create a capture, the combination of this endpoint and SMA with the solutions because a couple of your application may be in the private cloud or maybe in the SaaS because many organizations are using even the SaaS based application. So how can we protect your SaaS based application, your private cloud, your uh, your mobility solution and your endpoint together? That's what we call a zero trust, least privilege approach, which is can give you an easy anywhere, anytime trusted access. That's what the boundless security when you implement. Sorry, it's not moving. Yeah. So what is the journey? And I'm sure all my industry uh, friends will accept this. So what we have seen, all our customer, maybe you know, five years back or seven years back when we started the talking about securities, that people or all, all our customers are more of a reactive, right? That security was more of a reactive. Then all our customers started aware, you know, getting aware about the technologies, so securities, and then more of a aware customer. Then the next generation came into as a proactive uh, customer when the customer understood the security aware dedicated security team and you know advanced protection then we when we are now presently probably we are predictive customer if all our customers are you know, understood about layered security broad coverage limited automation but then what next the next is boundless when we are talking about data centric security posture always on right secure remote mobile workforce we are talking about aware of current and emerging attacks so it is more of a you know predictive and boundless together when you know that what exactly is coming towards your way and protecting against most evasive threats so that's the boundless model and the last slide which is about sonic wall in a summary we are an organization which is 215 plus countries we are present we ship 3 million plus firewalls, and uh, we have we are working with 20,000 plus channel partner, 300 patents. We are 28 years old organization, and we are protecting more than 500,000 large customer globally. So this is the the summary. Of what exactly the boundless cybersecurity? We are trying to solve the problem, which is wherever human works, wherever apps are, everything of what kind of any kind of threats every possible endpoint every type of infrastructure any type of any size of network and any type of business and that's what the boundless cyber security thank you so much if you need any information you can ask me question now you can ask me question later uh, as uh, as for your convenience thank you so much over to you Deepak. thank you devashish thank you thank you devashish um, i hope i'm audible to you to others as well Yes. Devashish? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Devashish. It was um, elaborative. It's exhaustive to talk about the process um, um, for, for everyone to summarize in a second about know the unknown as a practice or, or unified visibility are some of the pointers which uh, Devashish uh, brought down the boundless security. It's imperative while we are creating your cyber risk and mitigation. Uh, with respect to the time, I'm just trying to check. Hey, Samir, um, uh, are you also in? You're able to hear us? You've joined in? Okay, uh, just test it out. Uh, I would like to now invite um, Arvind Seva Ramakrishnan, uh, Group CIO, Apollo Hospitals. Arvind, before you take up uh, the board, uh, rather I would try to build that up. You are in a challenging situation as in not as an organization, but also as a sector uh, where healthcare life sciences have taken the center stage. Uh, it's, it's on both sides uh, for the survival piece as well and struggling in the COVID situation. And from a security and risk mitigation perspective, uh, we have been seeing from our organization, even from the industry, that every country in the world has seen at least one COVID-19 themed attack. Very, very unfortunate. Uh, and this is the volume of successful attacks in outbreak hit countries is all over. It can be from, from the United States to Russia, to Southeast Asia, uh, to the Indian organizations. 
So Arvind, we would like to hear from you on, on both the best practices, the mitigation risk, but also would like to hear for our audience and for all these speakers, how you are seeing as in healthcare while we are talking about building, you know, chatbots, creating technologies and platforms uh, so that you can help mitigate risk and then further we as an industry can help uh, mitigate risk for the, for the uh, citizens. Arvind, over to you to hear from you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Debashish, and uh, you know, thank you, uh, Dr. Rana. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, the healthcare workers are now uh, the COVID warriors, and uh, definitely yes. Uh, a very big thank you to all the members of the healthcare fraternity who are uh, you know protecting us, who are keeping us safe, who are risking all the their uh, personal uh, you know safety and trying to get uh, the world safe. So a very, very big thank you to all of them. Uh, God willing, India and the world will be out of this uh, virus and this uh, difficulty very soon. <clears throat> so with that, uh, yes, uh, healthcare is uh, challenged. Uh, delivery of healthcare is challenged, not just response to uh, the virus and those affected by the virus, but healthcare in its basic form is severely challenged as you see other parts of uh, you know elective treatments other parts of healthcare is now on a on a very very low to uh, a standstill situation obviously because uh, capacity is being created to take care of those who will be affected by the virus uh, but uh, let's uh, step aside from the virus situation uh, and look at healthcare as a as a whole uh, even prior to this uh, COVID situation. Healthcare has always been in the center and when you're talking about privacy and security, healthcare is all about privacy and security because you're talking about an individual, you're talking about a person. And any detail about a person is private and confidential. It's to be shared only with those who are part of the care process or those who are absolutely connected to the patient in terms of what we might call in typical jargon as next of kin. So healthcare has always demanded that sort of an activity. And uh, when we look at healthcare as such, the world of healthcare and the supply and the demand of healthcare are at two extremes. The demand is the entire planet of a billion people or more than a billion people. And the supply is absolutely short. The supply is short because uh, the less healthcare workers available and healthcare uh, workers have to be available in a certain education format uh, with certain uh, levels of knowledge, with certain levels of regulations and uh, expertise, and that's definitely on a shortage. Furthermore, there's a uh, clear divide between the urban and the rural and the semi-urban as it may account to the economics of the world. So the only way by which healthcare can be provided to everybody who needs to consume it and everybody is all of us in all formats of what we exist is technology. So you, we are clearly seeing that there is an increased reliance on the need for technology. There is an absolute need for the golden triangle of access, uh, quality and cost to be optimized. And access means again providing access to healthcare for a billion people is again reliance on technology. And there is a high, high, high degree of expectation around the best of best quality and the best of best clinical its, uh, outcomes. And you know what? This expectation is absolutely real. It's absolutely right to have such an expectation. And such an expectation can be mapped only with the uh, proliferation and the use of technology because the healthcare workers are human and how do we connect that human angle to uh, the delivery of health services and here uh, I know it sounds odd when I use the word mistakes or errors but healthcare is not an industry where we can expect and uh, afford to see mistakes and errors that means that we need to have it foolproof we need to have it 100 percent accurate 24 7 365 ubiquitous and omnipresent and that means the calling of technology to ensure that all of this is present and this means that the patients who are demanding the high quality service and the providers who are accountable for these high uh, quality of services are always kept in check. All of this means technology, technology, and technology all the way through. 
the more we talk of technology obviously comes in the risks of cyber security everything that has got to do with data around it and that means that we need to be ensuring that cyber security and safety and privacy are made part of our dna as these services are delivered this is very very important that we ensure that that happens uh, let's now look at an organization inside out typically and let's be honest about it when you talk about cyber security it's some it thing i'm sure the it people are taking great care of it we've got a lot of confidence on our it team and i'm sure they'll do this is typically what we hear in every organization cyber security is an organizational movement cyber security is not relegated to it i understand that the subject of cyber security has technology built into it that makes the personnel from the technology teams uh, the most knowledgeable to administer it and uh, ensure that it uh, takes its step forward but it security cyber security is an organizational subject it's a cultural subject of change management and people it's a subject of organizational transformation and process and not relegated to the silos of it and that's a very very important call to action as i would request all uh, uh, fellow members uh, and peers to look at when we are talking about cyber risk and mitigation then comes the whole aspect of building the culture of privacy let's get into uh, indian norms itself building the culture of privacy has a lot to do uh, especially in our society because when we go walk to any organization uh, uh, dr rana also mentioned about the education sector when you talk about them and say i'm so and so and i'm related to a person in so and so manner uh, you will see that our service sector is very upfront in giving up information uh, as much as we value our uh, our servicing mentality that's the 101 of the no no of uh, uh dissemination of information uh, so we need to build privacy we need to build security again as a culture from the inside out and from the outside in that means that everybody has to start valuing the processes associated with uh, cyber security and these not be taken as additional information or uh, 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 saying uh, information that is yeah, sting voluntarily given. These have to become voluntarily disclosure of information as to who deals with what information in what format, in what situation. And I'm talking from a healthcare angle, but it is applicable to almost every industry segment. That this is when you look at both the provider and the consumer. In, in again, in the healthcare situation, it could be the healthcare workers, the payers as well as uh, the patients who are the consumers of healthcare. So that is again very, very important in terms of how information is disseminated. Then comes the transfer of information. When we're talking of information dissemination, we're obviously today in the world of technology, we are seeing that the boundaries between the various health uh, providers is very, very thin. What do I mean by uh, boundaries between health providers? Let's take the example of probably the largest healthcare program in this planet, Ayushman Bharat. Ayushman Bharat is being administered to the entire population of India. And clearly it is being done on a technology platform. Without a technology platform, administering such a large scheme for the well-being of such a large population is close to impossible. We are also seeing every state has a chief minister's uh, health service scheme. We have a CGHS, which belongs to the entire central government health services. Such a large population of patients or consumers who, and when I say consumers, these are beneficiaries, but they are the patients and the consumers. They are consuming it. And this service can be effectively administered only with the advent of technology. That means transfer of information from the healthcare sector to the payers and the beneficiaries is happening in a technology manner. Again, ensuring that 
all aspects of privacy and security are adhered to by design so we are talking of privacy by design i am not talking of the hackers i am not talking of the intruders but i am talking of inside out in terms of building a culture building a system building a curriculum that is clear in terms of by design keeping security and privacy in mind that means the people the process and the technology this is not just a one sided conversation of securing it systems it is also about securing the mindset of people it is about securing the transfer of knowledge both by technology and by people and you know in healthcare uh, knowledge uh, information is shared both by people and by technology and that's where they're looking at and then coming up to the entire culture of building for the future we uh, the uh, both the speakers in uh, before me mentioned a very important point of it's not that because people are not aware i also touched upon it how do we ensure that we build awareness because we are facing the problem of cyber security uh, mismanagement and uh, compromises because people are not aware the inside what we call as insider attack or those who are un uh, thing unknowingly disclosing information that can hamper cyber security so that means that building the cyber curriculum into every school graduate undergraduate level as well as making them mandatory in all aspects of post graduate i am not limiting this to healthcare we we'll build that culture the dna of thinking security behaving security and practicing security so that's a real request for a call to action in terms of building that you see uh, you know that schools are uh, teaching their children about how to use microsoft office word or powerpoint or all of those this is not about a company and branding a company but they're thinking in terms of how you can use tools and techniques for efficient management of their education process and how to use that effectively when we were studying things were different we had to write it in and then type it in and there was quite a lot and now there are layers of efficiency going in it's appreciable i know there are uh, issues related to plagiarisms that always come in so for every benefit there is going to be some aspect of a negative which we need to control and contain so building in that education is absolutely vital then when it comes to cyber risk mitigation and risk management i think what's being proposed by the government in terms of the personal data protection bill is absolutely well it's much needed we need to follow and adhere to standard whether it is the iso 27001 standards or whether it is uh, related to the nist guidelines as applicable to india of course uh, but a guideline is always welcome to study and look at applicability these are uh, activities that are most welcome the moment you bring in a uh, regulation there's going to be an immediate screen for cost who's going to bear the cost and with the covid situation talking about cost is a very very uncomfortable situation but you know what there is a cost to costing uh, cost to quality there is also a cost to regulation there is also a cost to adherence and all of this i call it in terms of your our own right to be treated in a manner in which privacy and security is maintained that's basically the right that everybody has to maturity of systems it's purely an act of responsibility bringing that act of responsibility is vital into the system it brings in a change and there is a cost that is associated and this cost has to be rationalized we have to find the money or we have to create the mechanisms for it but it is an act of responsibility that we adhere to specifics of the act is not something i'm going to dwell into there are always suggestions that things can be made better and better but fundamentally the thought of regulating so that it builds a culture of security privacy as a dna of an organization of a society of a nation of a practice is what is important 
making it just merely punishable is probably not going to serve the purpose. So that is another way of looking at cyber risk security and prevention. Above all, it's clear that there have to be regular governance. Governance is critical. And service organizations looking at governance is very, very, very critical because again, like I uh, alluded to, it's not an IT thing. It's not something that will be taken care of in a silo or it is good that employees have trust on their management. But you know what? With governance, again, it starts inside out. Governance, not just top down. Always cybersecurity, I'm sure all of us have seen it, needs a management uh, uh, trust. But we need to have this bottom up as a cultural transformation. That's when we are looking at cyber uh, risk and uh, mitigation effectively addressed. All of this put together, again, my last closing in terms of request to the industry, particularly IT industry, the technology industry, the networking industry, the security industry. There are lots of tools available. But honestly, to many in the uh, 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 service sector, and I'm taking healthcare as part of the service sector, this sounds like rocket science. We have to simplify this. We have to simplify this so that we are able to understand where there is return on investment and how to gauge the return on investment because many aspects of cyber security and prevention is not a visible return on investment. That means that the industry has to help us guide, align the priorities. We need to have a neutral body that will help us align these priorities with all of us so that the industry can put these into practice and the industry is well guided and it is not merely a question of the procurement of a certain sets of tool sets and think that we are going to be secured. It is the tool sets with the understanding. That means a call to action to our own service industry on identifying our own organization. Unless we know who we are and what we are, Aligning with what we want will not work out. One shoe does not fit all. Just because it is done in another organization does not mean it fits my organization. So internal, every organization needs to understand what its prerogatives are, what its activities are. So all of this put together is how I see uh, uh, cyber security being understood, being managed, being mitigated and being administered continuously, not just because we are in a situation of deep uh, uh, stress now because, uh, due to the COVID uh, situation, but this is an ongoing activity that manages the state of health and the maturity with which we need to manage the state of health. As I said before, I see this as an act of responsibility to ensure that all of us are there and all of us are there in this together maturely and trying to ensure that all of us is there. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to all of you. I'll take questions at the end of the session. Over to you, Deepa. Hello. Deepak, yes. Just a quick check. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Am I audible? Is it better? Am I audible? Yes, Deepak. You are audible. You can hear us. Right? Yeah, Deepak, you can. Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you. Arvind, as long as all of us can hear and especially the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arvind. I would like to stop. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to stop here for a minute. And, take and for everyone in the panel, as well as for the audience, to summarize what you said, and there is a reason behind that. This is eye opener, uh, Arvind. It's 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 not the healthcare, but I will try the the points which you brought down from starting with the operational starting challenge, the operational not just challenge, not just risk, about, and risk and mitigation, but about the Right. So, so shortage of skills, the resources which is required to access the technology, embrace the technology, 
uh, was, a, was, a, was a set foundation, uh, Arvind, thank you for that. You brought up there is no errors. I'm sure it is more in the medical fraternity. You can't make errors, uh, not just being on the patient or lying somebody on the bed, but also equally important where errors can cause a higher data theft or mitigation plan can fail if we have so many errors and mistakes. Thank you for bringing that out. I'm, I'm thrilled to even share the point which you brought on about culture of cybersecurity. Thank you, Arvind, for bringing the culture part of cybersecurity. The way we say it's a boardroom discussion. It's not an IT issue. It's not to bring a room in the IT room and say, this is what we need to build a cyber risk or a mitigation or a one page plan. It does not work. The real world works with uh, people, process and technology. Another uh, three legged stool which you brought up and any of those legs broken, the system is broken. Unfortunately, uh, our learning as well and the historical evidences are people are the weakest link out of these three, uh, three legs. So that's very uh, uh, well taken up. Uh, thank you for bringing the Ayushman Bharat piece. Uh, we are privileged part of being in India. It's one of the healthcare largest program. And uh, we all as an organization embracing the technology and bringing is really important. I still have a lot to say uh, what you brought down, Arvind, that I would leave um, at least a minute more to explain that the, the also built up the behavioral aspect, the thinking security is very important, not just implementing technology. You brought up the point of privacy by design. I would like to highlight for audience uh, when Arvind mentioned uh, personal data protection bill being contemplated for a year or two and now it's being tabled and uh, hope we post COVID situation we see in the winter session, uh, which is really important for governance uh, to take care of citizens' personal data. And we all as an organization are representing positive that uh, to embrace and make 100% compliance for whether it is data for citizens, data for corporates and any organization. Similarly, for everyone's information, we also have coming up with national cybersecurity strategy vision 2020. India was not having that cyber strategy 2020 or an enhanced version. So this is one more thing which is going to impact each and every organization and industry in, in coming future. Uh, and that will build the strong foundation uh, uh, for the platforms which we provide for technology which we adopt. Uh, thank you, Arvind, for bringing the healthcare perspective, bringing the technology embracement, building the golden practices of being accessibility. Quality is something which you have put a lot of push on that just don't bring the technology, it's the quality which matters. Um, uh, and, and similarly, the design. And that's why we will say that when you are building a technology and security organization, I would like to highlight that statement here as you need to build a technology, something called as inbuilt technology, not onboard. It has to be inbuilt as a privacy or designs when you're bringing it to the system. And these all are in the technical terms you may hear uh, in personal data protection bill a national cybersecurity strategy coming up. Thank you, Arvin, for, for such a high tone started with uh, Dr. Rana on education and building things. Devashish brought an OEM point of view. Uh, you have brought up the healthcare sector as well as the overall regulatory governance practices. Shiv Kumar, we will be obliged and then waiting to hear from you and you have a lot of learning like all of us and also for the audience to hear Shiv Kumar, the CISO for BSC. We would like to hear from you about your, uh, you know, uh, views on cyber risk mitigations and the overall industry, how they are reacting. Shiv Kumar, over to you. Yeah, thanks everyone. You know, so uh, just to talk about, you know, we, the BSC being, you know, talking stock exchanges. So for any stock exchanges, if you talk about in cybersecurity, CIA, like confidentiality, integrity, and availability, when Availability is very important, you know, uh, and for us, we can't even afford, you know, because in second downtime in a second, we operate in a six microsecond, which is one of the fastest stock exchange in the world. Coming to, uh, uh, you know, cyber security. So we have built, you know, next gen cyber security operations center, which is considering of, you know, the technology like artificial intelligence, UBA, advanced persistent threat. So we have deployed almost all kind of technology because we can't even afford, you know, this kind of, you know, cyber attack, which can stop our business. So it is our requirement also. Now, today I will talk about, you know, the COVID-19 situation, you know, considering the worldwide COVID-19 situation and updates of the growing cases, which affected the people, uh, people from the viruses in India. We have started also planning and preparation of this situation, uh, such as a lockdown. And, uh, 
we wanted to assure that you know resources and technology planning in such a way that we can best and optimally utilize you know our resources so and the business should be as usual to and uh, continue in this you know pandemic situation caused due to the covid 19 now if you talk about you know bcp per se this is not like not like a normal bcp point of view where you know we have a primary site then you have an a dr site like you know if the primary site is full you will you know go to the dr site like most of the stock exchanges they actually operate from the dr site for uh, you know few days you know to check it but here the situation both the sites are affected because of this kind of so total bcp strategy should be different like the challenges if i talk about like capacity challenges for laptop and desktop connecting a bod devices number of vpn licenses like uh, you know cyber and data security challenges phishing email increase ddos attack increase so how will come down so we have defined you know work from home policy guidelines for that cyber security control for that security access to the system from the internet has been established those are already there but we have established you know more stringent you know depending upon the work from home policy so uh, so we have now if i summarize this thing in five areas like one is the technology and connectivity part second is the regulatory requirement third about the data security fourth is very important aspect about is a cyber security training and awareness and uh, last is the resource planning so i will talk about now uh, you know uh, you know vpn so we have given a two types of the vpn right now in the current scenario one is we talk about you know the the vpn which is called an ipsec vpn a client base which is for the company asset and then second is about the ssl vpn which is a container based vpn for the bod devices where the secure workplace is there and there is a no interaction between the user host desktop and a secure workplace itself so this is very highly secure and if i am talking about the some of the security controls uh, which are built like multi factor authentication is there where your ready password your otp on sms you are getting it complete you know tunnel is the encrypted if we have a geo fencing also like only it will be accessible from india it is a time based access is also given to the users and uh, you know we have built a zero trust model in all among that you know which is the role based and zero based uh, trust and very importantly we keep on doing you know third party you know assessment also for the network whether it is secured or uh, not so we have and our anti advanced persistent third is also integrated with this uh, uh, net with this you know vpn uh, solution so these are the some of the things which we have built uh, you know which we have built you know for you know uh, vpn and technology aspect then coming to the regulatory so they are so we are being a national critical infrastructure being certified and notified also so all type of cyber security advisories and threat advisories receive either from cbi or certain or ncipc we check integrate uh, test and then implement also we have integrated to our sim solution also which is on real time basis then we have a data security as a type uh, you know talk about you know zero trust model is there and the dlp is or data leakage prevention is also there very important aspect coming to the cyber security training and awareness we proactively you know cyber security awareness emailers we keep on sending all the employees do's and don'ts you know we uh, internal users especially the group companies we proactively inform you know uh, the user about the cyber threat you know uh, control and measure what we have done and we inform to the vigilance and not to trust on any email or information originated from outside organization for covid 19 and to report all such incident to our next gen cyber security operation center 24 into 7 we also do the you know awareness training through the emailers and in meanwhile there are lots of uh, you know uh, requirement which we are not only doing for ourselves also we are informing to the customers the member brokers you know the other you know company which is connected to us so which we are informing you know the external customer also and we keep on implementing all the advisories not only from the regulators but from the oem partners like checkpoint microsoft macap cisco there are lots of companies are there they are also keep on sending you know lots of patches or advisories which also we keep on testing and all
this is all about the technology then resource planning is also very important so first you know check most of the employees or technology employees on the regular basis their health and all whether you know they are affected or not affected including their families also because normally nowadays we are you know running with the 80 and 20 rule because 20 percent employees working right now and 80 percent working from home we plan for the shift accordingly their transport and pressure facility their essential services like pass their passes for the government uh, backup for you know uh, backup resources also their food arrangement their stay arrangement so these are the challenges which we are facing and how we are tackling down you know to take care of all this uh, you know uh, mediate and uh, you know actions uh, to come out these challenges If there are any questions, then I can answer them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shiva Kumar. Um, I think you brought up some, uh, you know, uh, very good points about some best practices as well, practically how the CISO or the organizations, and I'm sure the SMEs and uh, other organizations who have, if they have logged in the partner community, they would have leveraged few points which you brought up, uh, uh, Shiv, for the cybersecurity five practices, the IPsec tunneling while using VPN while you are remotely connected, some of the parameters they can practice overall while they're building it up. Very, very practical situations you have brought up. Um, even, even the governance and security, I, I'm happy that you have said it's not only about the, the organizations of consulting, which is bringing the advisories, you also need to make sure that as an organization, each one of us need to bring what is it we are seeing, and these are the services. Tanvind also brought out that services point is very, very critical. I think it is relevant to the quality of services as well as real time. I would like to make a statement there uh, from our organization as well and representing the industry. If you get an attack, it's very important not just thinking from the pandemic perspective. Do you have a business continuity plan, right? ready earlier or we are creating now it's very important that during this time we also leverage and step back to 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 recreate or to bring those uh, you know uh, the acts the process the regulations procedures read through what is bare minimum requirements we need to follow i'm sure a lot of a lot of organizations are also giving a vision of long term that whether post work from home or a post pandemic situation are we going to continue some of the aspects like this and if we have to what are those changes or disruptions which uh, this industry will going to change uh, vis a vis these specific areas which we have been talking in the past historically so covid 19 situation will not only accelerate the adoption of technology but will renew the focus of many of these in enhancing the neo technologies thank you thank you shivam kumar for bringing that aspect for all of us for all May I quickly check if Samir has logged in? Uh, I see some technology issues uh, which we could not see him earlier. Uh, Samir, a quick soft check. Are you in the online? Yes, yes, I'm there. Can you guys uh, hear me? Yes, yeah, Samir. Welcome, please, Samir. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Samir. I mean, uh, this is excited to see. Uh, you know, while you came up, the voice is being loud. Uh, I think that the, the tone and the heat of the cyber risk and mitigations have been built up well. Um, I, I hope you were able to hear from uh, uh, Arvind Ji, Shiv Kumar Ji, uh, Dr. Rana Devashi from industry perspective. Um, um, this is the real time. I would like to have some questions like I have put hard talk for Arvind. We had a chat yesterday as well. And just to conclude that point as well, there are so many emergency services which are required not related to COVID, which have been shared yesterday while we were having quick chat. And, and this gave me, even as an individual, how heartening it is that if I have to visit hospital, I'll be scared of it, right? At this point of time, how do we differentiate for the bigger thing? Similarly, when I'm logging in online right now, and I'm getting a pop-up from HDFC bank or, or any of our banks and I'm logged in, I always feel worried that, okay, am I safe, secure because I'm working from home? My, my, my boundaries of disruptions have been already gone and I'm directly connected to my corporate network. At the same time, the same system, the same mobile is my homely affairs as well to connect and pay things. So, um, Samir, we would like to hear from you where the channels of digitization, because you are part of essential services, you have to continue for us business as usual. 
how are you seeing the shift and how you're going to correlate and give some messaging on cyber risk and mitigation and we would like to hear also in terms of embracing the technologies and uh, what all we can learn uh, from the industry you belong to which is a very primary industry of banking samir over to you samir is a vice president right. of uh, and CISO for hdfc bank thank you samir right so good afternoon to all of you so i think uh, it is advantage on my part to be the last member you know already uh, my friends have uh, articulated and conveyed their thoughts in a very lucid manner so nothing great for me to be left out from cyber security risk perspective or cyber threat landscape perspective but just quickly to tell you about you know uh, how i am thinking now or what is happening what what we are doing what we should be doing collectively as a team and also as the individuals representing their organizations so that's that's the uh, thought process or pointers i have look i think last one and a half month uh, 40 odd days have been uh, very different uh, in the life of a ciso for example especially the banking ciso uh, initially uh, you know i mean uh, let us take my example i got flooded with multiple requests about people want to access their application, their network storage folders, their individual desktops from home. Right, so making sure that you know uh, the um, the devices from where the requests are generated have the uh, if there is a malware, then the malware you know, what is the probability of malware sniffing the session or sniffing the screens or keylogger getting captured in the keystrokes. So multiple issues uh, related to malware, related to data leakage and related to some unknown stuff because this is a completely uncharted territory all along and in my view this is uh, a completely unprecedented situations we are witnessing right now and i am sure because i also had the business continuity in my organizations none of the dcp meetings we envisage this particular scenario of complete globe or india getting locked down right so this scenario this situation as i said is a completely new to all of us, uh, which means uh, the business continuity has taken absolutely a super solid precedence over any of other initiatives. Today, the top leaders, top management, the board of directors want absolutely the business to continue. There has to be a business resiliency. Whatever is required to do that, do that in terms of the cyber risk management, in terms of the IT initiatives in terms of the compliance, governance, whatever you say, that is left to the individuals. Now you understand the kind of stress and the thought process this particular aspect would bring in the life of a CISO. Okay, uh, so that is point number one. Now, having addressed this thought process, you know, having thought and clearly put down the plan of action. Uh, to address this end goal of the business continuity, that is something uh, is of perhaps in importance and interest to the, uh, the panelists and also to our audience right now. So uh, naturally, we have ensured that you know whatever the technical control needs to be validated, supported in terms of making sure that any device is connecting to our VDA has the antivirus is enabled. So those checks have been done now. We have allowed the VDA access uh, the, the people to log on remotely. But I think the larger game is what I'm thinking right now is the game of working from home becoming a new normal, right? When working from home is becoming a new normal, naturally the people would go one step up. I'm saying that, hey, I'm not, you are mandating me right now to access the bank's applications through you know a containerized environment through my official laptops, which is fine as the policy control. But going forward, I can't procure the 100,000 laptops. For example, in HDFC Bank, our strength is more than 100,000. It's more than 120,000 rupees. So I can't have 120,000 laptops to be given to each and everybody. That's a very costly proposition. So what is the way out? The easiest way out is, okay, the pay for the people who have the, uh, the personal desktops, the personal laptops at home, taking care of their internet billing, and uh, making sure that a basic hygiene is set up and tell them, hey, you want access to these applications? To your desktops, this is the minimum five to ten controls in place. So the question comes of reimbursement and that's that is different. That that is another point which will kick in. 
Another point number three, the people would say that I don't have a desktop laptop, the era is gone now, I have a fantastic mobile device, I have a smartphone, I have a Microsoft Surface, I have an iPad, I have a tablet, so I want access through all those mechanisms, right? May not be, all people will demand, but a certain set of segment people will demand. So the question is, are you ready? Do you want the data to get downloaded on their machines? From there they can follow the data to out? Or do you feel that if their machine is compromised by sophisticated hackers now, and who are open in this market? And I was talking to some uh, threat researchers you know, a week back, and he was telling me that the kind of chats he seeing, especially from Iranian and Russian hackers, on the dark web is, is mind-boggling, right? Because they are completely free time uh, to all of them, and this is the, perhaps the best time for all of them. So they have plenty of time. They have a new um, technology train which has evolved called working from home. Many people in the initial flood request have even worked from home without making sure that the reasonable security practices or controls are in place or basic necessary cyber diligence put in place. So access have been given. So it is perhaps relatively easy for them to try to break into or penetrating the organization. So that's that's another area. So while that is happening, the threat landscape is getting evolved, the dark web is getting more active, more active. The fraudsters have a lot of time now. And there is a technology demand, uh, technology evolution happened, and there is a demand by your people to access those devices from work from home through multiple devices, which is you know kind of the DIY I was touching too. So I think this is the interesting idea. So the next uh, one, two, three years, I think this is what will completely rule the world. And already I think TCS has uh, kicked the kicked or created a spark saying that by 2025. 75% of the employees uh, of TCS, the top management want to work from home. And I was just talking to our senior people and I was told that similar thought process is also going on in our bank, right? So I think today, what we are discussing, focusing is only one element of technology risk control. I think the ball is much bigger. It, it touches the compliance angle, it touches the governance angle, it touches the Oversight, uh, visibility, data privacy, how to make sure that the guy who's accessing my infrastructure is my employee and not his spouse or his brother from his laptop, right? So how to make sure that, you know, a person has, as a policy, we mandate cameras to be enabled. If some other face kicks in, 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 in between the camera and the person sitting at the time, the session gets disconnected. How you make sure that the session is recorded, the screen time is calculated, certain. Multiple parameters will go on in the days to come and each parameter getting introduced will bring certain elements of known risk, of malware, of data leakage, of ransomware, of screen grabber, of keylogger. More importantly, there would be an unknown element getting introduced, may get introduced in the days to come. So having the visibility over what is going on as part of the session management, to what extent I before my detection capabilities, I think one of my friends had said about the NIST framework. So how do I divide the complete program, the complete work from home strategy in terms of protect, detect, respond, and recover. Respond and recover being the cyber resiliency element. So I think this is very, very important in the days to come. So it is too early for anybody to say that, oh, I'm there. We are absolutely there. Guys, we are there to a great extent. But what will happen in the next six months down the line in terms of Access request part, we never know, right? So study the market, study the technology evolution, study the cyber threat you know, landscape, study the new risk getting emanated, and plan your strategy, tweak your policies. I will you know, take it forward. So this is my, uh, my, my two cents. Over to you. Thank you, Samir. Uh, Thank you, Samir. Just a quick note. Hello. Hello. Am I audible, Samir? To you, Telma? Now it is better. Now it is better. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. I would definitely like to summarize few points. Because you are, as I said, so why is it cracking the essential why services is cracking? helping the industry. Uh, you brought up some points. 
uh, which is which is very important for all of us to raise. Hello, Deepak, your voice is cracking. Let me try to turn off the camera. Yeah, is it better now? Yeah, Deepak. Now it is better. better. Thank you. So Samir, thank you for bringing the the, the essential services, uh, which is critical for for all on the planet while we are doing the transactions, while we as the the consumer sitting at home and uh, making ourselves secure and even taking as a seat of a corporate, how these organizations together, we as organization industry and you are serving your own clients, you have brought up the point of uh, touching the cyber risk and mitigations. The ball is not small. Uh, we are learning that you're right. The work from home is strategy to be brought up. I'm happy to hear that there is a long-term uh, vision. Arvind also brought up, uh, Shiv Kumar pointed out, uh, Dr. Ajay brought up not just about education, but a visibility, the privacy and security aspect. For resilience, you have brought up the point of resilience, which is very, very important. Last to summarize on the part and respond, uh, which is very important that as a threat intelligence, you need to build and protect and detect and respond uh, to these services. Um, uh, extremely thankful to hear from, uh, from all of us uh, together. Um, I would like to just summarize a few points for everyone and also for the audience. Uh, we have heard a lot um, on three sectors, uh, which is uh, we were fortunate to have three different sectors and industry uh, point of view from from the OEMs and the vendors uh, side of it, uh, from Sonic Wall, uh, BSC has brought out the, the practical aspect of it. Um, uh, Arvind, you helped us in terms of the, the strategy, the golden rules, the quality, no error strategy, uh, bringing privacy by design, uh, foundation of a cultural change, bring it every day to boardroom rather than the IT operations challenges of security, which is more to do with regulatory governance aspect of it, but it has to be a larger discussion. So, uh, Samir very rightly pointed out that how do we evangelize just one of the technology and the way we are in the distributed environment from home, not just brothers, cousins and people surrounding us. And fortunately, they are part of us. So we have learned internally that every, every uh, boundaries are, are blur now. So we used to say in IT industry, IT is blur. The perimeter is no more there. Your systems and phones are directly connected to internet, which is true. But now we are in each other's home virtually, uh, unconsciously. Um, so with that, there is a cultural change requirement. The cyber risk and mitigation is not only about talking about best of the collaboration tools to be used, some security practices to be done. Rather, it has to be very, very sector oriented. It has to have a and plan of entire visibility where your data assets are uh, what is the quality of level are we just struggling because of pandemic and building something or is it like work from home i can remotely connect where my data is secure while i am doing any transactions or I, even if i'm right now collaborating am i uh, am i encrypted uh, is my talk well content are we the only one listening and hearing or somebody else is also in the man in the middle attack so so many things need to be built out but to summarize there is there is a pre-incident requirement we should be looking into uh, i would like to give only uh, uh, 30 seconds of our perspective as well uh, to say that there has to be a pre-incident process to be defined there is a post incident that if you are attacked if you are under COVID, the way we say, if, if I'm ill because of this situation, do we have some best possible mechanism? Answer is yes. Similarly, in cyber risk mitigation, there is a possibility of not getting further impacted horizontally, laterally movement or vertically, the way we say. So there has to be a continuity plan. You need to bring the business back if you are part of any major attacks. And then what you have done, have you recovered it and then found out is it still mitigated or you have to create a consistent and plan. This is how pre, during the condition and post conditions are some of the aspects we would like to bring upon. Uh, with that, we come to an end. We will quickly open up for one or two questions. Otherwise, I'll put one or two questions to, to all the panel uh, before we wrap up well on time. Is there any any questions? I can see many, but I, it's very, very, you know, the fonts are very small even in the last time as well. Uh, Rohit, do you see any questions? One or two to take it up.
yes we can we, we have a time to take one or two questions just give me one second okay there's a question if user is connected through vpn is there still a chance that the network is affected Shiv, you want to start that while you build up the VPN and I'll take help from someone? Yes. yes, so yes, the good question. Yes, it can be impacted, but you know, uh, it's all depend upon what kind of VPN you have it, you know, client-based VPN and then SSL base, you know, the secured container is there. So which secured container doesn't allow, you know, to move any kind of malware or virus in that container because that container is connected to your gateway. The second thing at your gateway level also you have a multi-factor authentication like OTP is there, it is integrated with the AD, username and password. And normally also you allow lots of, you know, the risk mitigation uh, technologies like NTAPT solution and other solu EDR solution so that you can not allow any kind of malware or threat to enter you to, into your network. So this way you can mitigate, you know, those kind of, you know, uh, uh, those kind of your know, malware or viruses to uh, uh, come inside your network. Hello. Okay. Uh, any other uh, panelists? Let's give me one. Uh, we can take one more question. Uh, Deepak, you are not audible, please. I think your mic is uh, mute, please, uh, Deepak. Now, am I audible? Yeah, that's good. Okay, um, so while the question comes up, or maybe to wrap up, I, I would put a question to, to all the uh, distinguished speakers. Uh, maybe it's a, it's, it's a wrap up or, a, or a, one or two key messages while from the sector. Uh, how do you feel this current situation to be taken as a short term approach and even as a long term approach? What is it you will put as a priority out of uh, a good amount of you know, information we share? as a short term priority, which is very critical, relevant to the topic of cyber risk and a long term message which you wanted to give to the audience. Uh, Arvind, I'll start with you uh, to help uh, and then, then we'll, we'll move on to Dr. Rana. Sure. I think uh, key message is in terms of preparedness and uh, never to assume that uh, something uh, would probably not happen or would not happen to us. You know that uh, mindset of uh, of being ready for all situations because whatever we are going through uh, of an entire nation a world being shut down services being shut down is probably something that we've either seen in an english movie or uh, read in a robin cook uh, novel uh, there little did we ever think that this could happen to us so i think it's a very powerful lesson uh, that Nature tells us that nature has always got the upper hand and we need to be humble. And uh, that means that uh, giving utmost importance to design and execution and utmost importance to proliferation of that because the time it takes for us to adapt to a new normal or a new situation is very, very low. And uh, an organization in terms of business continuity, an organization in terms of resilience, because its commitment to the services it provides, whether it's uh, Samir in HDFC or uh, Sting, uh, uh, Dr. Rana in healthcare, the, the uh, commitment to the end customers and the stakeholders is not diminished at all. And sometimes the anxiety is built up because of a certain lapse or non-availability of a service in a certain manner. 
I think that needs to be well understood. So I, I'm not going to call this short term, medium term, long term, but really take this as a lesson and ensure that we practice it always. Uh, because the moment we start doing short term, medium term, long term, our mentality of it will not happen to us and it will not happen to us now will get in and immediately the uh, cutting the curve, thing, uh, you know, rounding the corners uh, starts happening. And our inherent uh, cultural ability of postponing is always uh, there that we can never <laughs> let go of. So I think those are aspects that we need to you know, discipline ourselves. So it's a rude awakening for all of us. Uh, I don't think anybody enjoys the situation. I don't think anybody wants this to continue ever. Uh, it's, uh, but I think uh, keeping that in perspective, being prepared all the time, being responsible inside out and outside in as what I was mentioning earlier. I think that's what, so I would really avoid a short, medium term, long term. Excellent. Uh, thank, thank you, Arvind. Uh, with this itself, let me change the question for everyone, which makes a lot of sense as well. What is the call to action? And, and rightly pointed out, whatever time it is, we need to be prepared. So let's let's take it as by heart that what is the call to action, Dr. Ajay Rana? Um, a quick 15 seconds to 30 seconds from you. To, to wrap up yeah thank you deepak uh, for asking this a lovely question my this the approach with this with three point of view uh, during covid uh, before the covid as well as the after the covid 19. the first approach is that uh, proactive approach to ensure the safety of the immense amount of information that is available with respect to all sectors so we have the proactive approach and second point is that about the strong access control authentication authorized mechanism to control the database to monitor the database uh, it is up to the government policy uh, we are waiting we are not here waiting for this the government the government pass some rules and regulation that is the life and the about the data with respect to care about all these things and the most important thing about two sectors uh, like we are in education so two important sector is that at least three to five percent cost of your business must be spent on this the cyber security mitigation and at least all the sectors with respect to health sector with respect to education with respect to i think yes bank has the around more than 30 to 40 percent the cost maybe on the security and this the, they have the strong system but same is applicable to education sector at least three to five percent of your business course cost may be used uh, during this uh, uh, for cyber security mitigation point of view and the last is about for all sectors uh, if you are in bank if you are in healthcare if you are and the infrastructure about the in-house knowledge the knowledge to update the knowledge of our employee to update the knowledge of our, uh, our customers to update the knowledge about the end users so that is from my side deepak and thank you to provide this virtual uh, wonderful opportunity i thank you to this the SOHM and your leadership and um, thank you all thank you very much uh, deepak Thilwa. Thank you, Dr. Rana. Um, very well uh, taken. We are also learning from each other, so I will take that as an as a learning and implement in our organization how we can bring that better to healthcare and education. Very quickly, moving to Samir. Samir, am I audible to you? Okay. Uh, Shiv, am I audible to you? Yeah, tell me. Okay, perfect. Shiv, over to you for call to action. We learned from Arvind, from Dr. Rana. Uh, what's the call to action? I mean, this is call to action from you for all of us, for the for the audience, um, and what you are seeing in reality of 15, 30 seconds of a call to action from you. See, uh, one thing previously you are asking about, you know, the what is the learning or trend because of this due, uh, due to COVID-19. I think yes. one, uh, one very important thing, you know, after this trend, you know, that work from home culture will be come, you know, previous, yes, it was there, but it was there only on few MMCs or maybe especially on IT industries, but especially for the BFSI or a government kind of structure or very highly regulated organization, which they never allow from work from home kind of stuff, that will be now will start, you know, and it will not for the given period of the time for a specific for this uh, 
you know uh, for these three four months but now it will be continue forever you know at least right now we are doing a reverse way maybe 80 20 kind of time maybe tomorrow it is a reverse way at least still 20 to 30 percent staff should be work from home so that business continuity will be there for any kind of situation thank you thank you chef kumar uh, the bcp plan obviously remains always a uh, very quick note from devashish uh, you can hear us yes yeah so uh, devashish okay, for a call to yeah thank you so it's basically like I think everyone has said the same thing if I summarize and whatever we are seeing as you know, the, from the industry, you know, remote working is a new norm and it is here to stay. So now I think the industry has to understand what exactly is a new plan and how we can actually address this situation. So what we see is, you know, I think uh, uh, Dr. Arvind, Mr. Arvind is also pointed out. I think is nothing is, don't take this as nothing will happen to us. You know, postponing the technology, postponing the decision-making things. It's it's a normal thing. So I think it's basically it's our regional issues. It's not uh, with any any industry specific. It's it's specifically probably for the Indians mentality. But then you know what my suggestion is. I think don't compromise on technology. There is multiple new technologies are available. If you cannot take the decision, please reach out to your vendor. We reach out to us. Lot of use cases available. You can take those use cases and follow those use cases and implement, right? So, not, of course, you have to take the decision or else you cannot forward, right? So, three things which I would like to tell, uh, which you need to, uh, or any industry need to implement, because when it's a remote employees, three things. One is your client device, any device which you are using, it's a laptop, desktop, or handheld, whatever. And then your network and your application and data. Three things you need to protect. And how you will protect? I think that's the question which we need to discuss. I'm not saying we have the best in class technology. Maybe, you know, many other best in class technologies are there. You guys are the veteran in this industry, but we can collaborate and we can definitely achieve this objective, right? So that much I, I can tell. But yes, we have a lot of use cases, references. We'd love to share all this to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vashish. Here, I would like to conclude the session. There was an extra time uh, we have taken. Um, I would take just one more minute to thank, at uh, a vote of thanks to uh, all these speakers. Uh, th first of all, thanks to audience, everyone, if you're able to see us, uh, hear us clearly. I would like to sincerely apologize for a five minutes delay to start. We all are dealing um, with the situation and technology as well. Uh, to conclude, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Ajay Rana, Senior Vice President, RBEF Amity. Thank you for giving your time and valuable inputs on education fraternity. Uh, Mr. Arvind Sivakrishnan, a Group CIO of Apollo Hospital. Nothing better can come from the from the healthcare industry. So many learnings and disruptions which you have brought. Uh, thank you, thank you so much uh, for for doing this. Um, uh, thanks, Samir, for building that uh, uh, for us. I would say, as a citizen as well as from the corporate, you know, the essential services we are running and some of the processes you brought up. Uh, during this session, there are a lot more to do in multiple sessions to cover deep dive into it. Shiv Kumar, bringing the technology perspective of it as a CISO and how other CISOs are handling it is a straightforward talk uh, for any many of the audience. Uh, Devashish, you have brought up the OEM perspective. I'm sure all of the technologies are, are really important. Uh, as I also mentioned, technologies are the pillar technology, technology, technology. That's how it is. Um, I would like to conclude on only one point security privacy and most important for us as an organization and even for all of us is the trust. This is the time we are going to build trust on each other, trust with our families, trust of data, trust of privacy, trust of their security as well from pandemic situation, security for my child, security for a family, while they are also accessing the same system, same desktops and laptops. And at the corporate side, the governance practices, the regulation practices we all follow, and all the technical organizations, please use best of the collaboration tools, well encrypted, use multi-factor authentication, make a pre, post, and a future plan as well for such cyber threats and mitigation. With that, uh, threats are closer to you than you think, Arvin, you brought that up. Uh, let's keep a watch to it, we are also watching. Thank you everyone for joining in. Yeah. Wish you a very happy day and all the best. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all my esteemed panelists as well. Thank you, my colleagues. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good day. Bye-bye.